I'm Kia ora koutou katoa, uh, ko Tom Wilson toku inoa. So my name's uh, Tom Wilson, um, I'm the fairly new Chief Science Advisor that NEMA's um, stood up over the last six months. Um, I still feel incredibly new and, and fresh to the, to the role, um, but uh, really thrilled to be here. And um, I'll just start out perhaps with just giving a little bit of background about me and then the um, formidable task of, of trying to summarise some of the key thoughts from or, or summary of, of today. Um, so my role is a 0.5 um, FTE at, at, at NEMA um, and I, the other half of me is um, still based at the University of Canterbury where I've interacted with, with a number of you in the room um, over the last 10, 20 years where I'm a professor of disaster risk and, and resilience as well. The NEMA role is a strategic one, so it's an opportunity where um, NEMA is very keen to uh, advocate for the use of science and evidence, or best evidence, for um, decision making in the emergency management system. So I'm part, my position and, and me is, is sort of part of that. Um, I feel really lucky to have been here today. I've, I was one of the, um, or still are, one of the uh, senior scientists involved with the AF8 initiative and uh, been involved with that for, uh, for five or six years. Very comparable mission to what you're undertaking today um, with respect to um, some of the trying to understand what a, the impacts of a future Alpine fault earthquake might look like for Aotearoa. Um, and so really um, it was exciting to see some of the amazing science that's been done here and leading into planning tomorrow. I, I did just want to um, reflect those. What, where I really cut my teeth was in the Canterbury earthquake sequence where I was brand, brand new academic um, and we'll never forget the terror of literally feeling my house shake to bits around me um, on the, um, with the Christchurch earthquake in February 2011 and seeing the, the challenges of both the natural uh, phenomena that, that manifested but also the, the, the very clear decisions that have led us to where we were uh, with uh, leading into that disaster and the decisions that were made afterwards and that's it's why tomorrow is just so, so important. Um, I also really quickly wanted to acknowledge Ben, Murray and the rest of the team that's, that's pulled all this together today. This is, this is absolutely fabulous and uh, it's wonderful to be able to be travelling again and, and to, to be with you all here. Um, so I thought that where things started today was a fabulous um, summary by, by David, um, leading us with a, a sort of platform of the science and the understanding of, of why we, we have something in play. Um, and I think uh, it's so important to understand why um, uh, one of these, uh, what, what the issues that we, that we face. Um, and I really enjoyed Jose's um, work of explaining the uh, um, incredible science that's starting to give us some insights into what, what we might be facing, both in terms of the, um, the types of tsunami that we might see um, affecting the coast. But I, I, for me, I guess personally, I really enjoyed the sensitivity analysis which you're working through of looking at how the different parts of the, uh, the plate boundary and which bits might be causing um, some of our greatest challenges and what it distilled down to and so some, some pretty um, simple key, key messages um, which, was, which was just fabulous. I, I, as a natural hazard risk assessment nerd myself, was really interested in the, the role of debris and seeing that starting to come into some of the numerical modelling as well, which I think gives us some amazing insight around what we can start to think about planning for and, uh, and seeing that um, start to come to life, which I thought was really cool. Um, Kate's talk also was, was superb. Um, the, the paleo tsunami uh, world is one that can be a challenging one to communicate. There's a lot of finicky details there, but I thought you did a fabulous job of uh, articulating um, what the state of play is, what that evidence base is that we have for why we're starting around some of that planning. And that was, that was really cool. And I, I learned a lot from how you were communicating some of the uncertainties there. Um, and I enjoyed the, should we say, the discourse around having a question mark on the slide. I thought actually that was quite good. It was quite provocative. Um, and um, leading into William uh, Marion's and James's talks, um, which I have to declare I'm slightly biased towards because I'm, I'm more in that's, my, that's more my disciplinary space. But again, just a fabulous insight into what a starting to build the picture of what we might potentially see. Of course, we're looking at often at scenarios and, and no doubt the scenario that we pick will be wrong, but at least it gives us something to plan around. And I think there's, there's uh, the weight of evidence, both in terms of anecdote and, and the experience we've had over the last um, 10 years with experience here in New Zealand, but also with international research around being able to think around what the consequences are and what the risks are. It allows us to plan with a lot more um, 
uh, struggling for the right word here, but also just being able to picture and, and see what that might look like, see what those influences can be, I think brings, brings some of these challenges to, to life a little bit. Um, I guess one of the, the really sort of four of four key points that I've, I've uh, took away from today was was partnerships being at the top. Um, I think the um, what there was in three dimensions to that that the partnership between science and practice is essential. So having that clear um, interface woven together and having these types of um, uh, hui today is all important. But I think also that the science picture perhaps showed that the importance of taking a multidisciplinary and even interdisciplinary approach, where we're, we're moving out of our traditional roles as geologists or a tsunami modeler or, or whatever, and starting to look at more at what the mission is all about, whether it to be um, saving our, or, or looking to reduce the, the number of casualties that we might sustain, improving our infrastructure resilience or, or whatever the, um, the key priority is, um, moving beyond those disciplinary silos I think is all important. And I would be doing my um, NEMA role a disservice if I didn't stress the importance of it. It's all about the, 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 the partnerships together between national, regional and, and local. Um, both uh, all the way from, from uh, you know, the, the different elements of government right down to our individual communities. And I, I thought we got a, some, some nice insights and glimpses of that today. And particularly the, the Red Cross um, presentation um, gave us some, some really good uh, uh, hints around that. I, the, the second main message I really wanted to endorse was I, I strongly endorse and really, really encourage the, the moving from that wonderful and very firm platform of geophysical and, and hazard science and moving more into that impact and, and risk uh, dimension. It's certainly not in any way to discount or, or to say that the other, other sciences is important, but I think that's where a lot of the opportunity now is that you've got that platform and let's build from it. Don't, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater though, keep, keep investment in some of those other areas, there's some important remaining questions, but I'd really strongly encourage that, that move into impact and risk. If nothing else, that short time in government that I've had is just how powerful some of those key risk statistics are around probability and consequence. That gets big decision makers' attentions quickly and, and uh, again we know that there's, there's plenty of evidence around that. I really enjoyed the discussion, well enjoyed is probably not the right word, I was, I was quite moved by the discussion around casualties. Um, it's a very difficult topic and one that needs to be approached with extreme sensitivity. But certainly a key lesson from the Alpine or the AF8 experience is having some as robust as possible casualty modelling to allow our emergency services and district health board um, partners to plan around is really important. We found that as an absolutely key lesson and I think we got hints of, of that today. I enjoyed the question from our police friends uh, here. I'd encourage around the critical infrastructure work. I think James gave us a, a really wonderful insight there around um, some of the opportunities as well, thinking around not just damage of our built environment, but what might the loss of service mean? What's the reality for our communities and our households? You know, what does it mean for, for three, four months without road access? What does it mean without having reliable water? What does that mean for our communities and, and for our families? Those are quite confronting issues, however, Equipping our communities with the insights around what the, the prospect of that might look like does empower them for around that, that looking at what the planning might be. And again, there's, there's good insights from other, well, actually both from East Coast Lab and all the wonderful work going on here on the, in the East Coast of, of New Zealand, but also around the country. There's a lot of good uh, research examples around that partnership with community and, and iwi uh, to empower them with that type of knowledge. I'd stress the point around habitability as well, um, in terms of those more integrated models, looking at what that reality looks like for the household um, as a way to inform uh, more usefully, I would contend, our welfare planning and our broader planning response as well. So it's a little bit of a call to arms to the science, science community, but also there is those models out there and, and uh, opportunity to use. One thing I didn't hear too much of today was the opportunity around macroeconomic modelling as well thinking in terms of that long-term recovery planning. Um, an observation I would certainly take is um, uh, looking at, I mean, this is, a, this is a strategic national risk. So thinking it through the lens of what the Reserve Bank or Treasury might be looking at and how they might be looking to, to help partner and invest, I think is something that we could and, and should be considering too. That was a very long second point, my apologies. The third point um, would be our social science. 
um, and the continued need for strong investment uh, there. I think uh, Marion gave us some wonderful insights, but also there was social science peppered throughout many of our, our talks today. Um, you know, Williams, I thought, was a superb example of that critical need for clear social science uh, inputs based on New Zealand data and our community's data, feeding in to inform those models so that they're, they're fit for purpose for our communities. Um, I could wax on about that a little bit more, but I just I really want to stress that as a really important need for continued investment. I'd also note the, effect of, uh, the importance of critiquing the effectiveness of our, our own emergency management decisions. Yes, there's the natural event which precipitates part of the disaster, but disasters are a human event, they're, they're a human construct. So how we respond, the strategies that we put in place, that can exacerbate or reduce the effects of the disaster. So critically reflecting on our planning and all those types of things I think is a really important part of the picture too. And having that reflective um, analysis is key. A few quick thoughts here which I'd love to unpack further, so feel free to um, catch up with me a cup of tea or, or um, something fizzy, but I think community-based and citizen science approaches, really important. Um, partnership with uh, iwi researchers, some wonderful methodologies there and empowering and equipping that is, is uh, essential. Don't forget about our rural communities. Um, I, I really enjoyed Ben's uh, Marae Resilience Program, um, keen to learn more about what's happening in the rural space. Um, but also keep in mind, our, we live in a multi-hazard context too, and we certainly don't need to say to this audience that there's been some clear examples of our, of our changing climate over the last couple of years. We, that needs to be part of, uh, considered as part of planning for these types of events. And the final point that I would really like to make is the importance of coordination of our scientific and research investment in uh, projects like this. Um, I think uh, it's, it's so critical to have a team approach to this kaupapa, kaupapa, excuse me. New Zealand, frankly, has a fragmented and at times unbelievably opaque science and research funding system, and it's awfully difficult to navigate through. But positions like my own um, and a number of others uh, are available to help try and navigate through that, form that collective, and get that coordinated investment into those key needs. Um, I think it's so important to ensure that that research or whatever knowledge-based system that we're looking at, uh, it's an inclusive approach. Um, but the reality is it is complicated even for a small nation, so having clear structures and mechanisms around how we can uh, coordinate this effectively. And just want a big shout out to East Coast Lab who does a superb job in this, in this space. Um, and I guess, you know, from my own perspective so, as sort of signing off here is, um, NEMA and others, such as EQC, or um, we're very keen to help, both in terms of direct support with some of that science and, and connecting and making sure that's a clear partnership as part of the emergency management system, but also the ability to indirectly support as well through advocacy and influencing the big funders like MB and uh, Royal Society and so on. Um, and I, I did have a note here, and I can't think of how to sort of elegantly weave this in, but I, I really did want to finish on a note of this is, it's about us together forming that, that key partnership, both at local, regional, and, and from the national perspective. Thank you for, for humouring me. I hope I've done an adequate job of, of summarising things today. Um, it's been an absolute privilege to listen to everybody, and I can't wait to get stuck into things tomorrow with you. Kia ora.